been penetrated by the air. The ice that you see right at the base as we stare out off the bow of the ship is about 450 years old if indeed it fell up at the very top of the stone accumulation. That is at the end of the glacier, which is 76 miles from the sea. It takes about 450 years on average for it to get down. I certainly have to say on average because of course the rain of the ice varies over time. This particular glacier has been very hard to predict its average rate of movement simply because at times it surges or moves forward at a far faster rate than it normally would. I'll probably get back in just a minute and tell you, perhaps remind some of you, that the ice that's on dry land, that's not tidewater glaciers, is pretty much in synchronous across the state of Alaska. That is, those glaciers are fairly unanimously retreating. Out of the 23,112 that have been counted, virtually all are retreating on land. The tidewater glaciers are slightly different, although certainly all of them, including Hubbard this year, is retreating. The rate at which they're retreating varies significantly. That's primarily because since they are tidewater, meaning they actually touch the ocean, the ocean itself will erode away the bay. There's a little bit of a gap coming off the middle of that splash. If you look in that area, by the way, you might see another one because often the first one will simply destabilize the piece of ice, sometimes even a large piece of ice. You can see the piece of ice over on the right side, the starboard side of the ship. Going off the starboard bow, you can see a place where a piece of ice came off, maybe, let's say, a third of the way from the right side of the glacier if we look at it. So I was mentioning how the glacial retreat does indeed vary depending on where the particular tidewater glacier actually meets the sea. If there's a large moraine underneath the glacier that we have been developing over time, that moraine is actually going to protect the glacier slightly from your road and seawater. But if it overtops this moraine, now the seawater can come underneath and actually melt the glacier from the bottom. So one of the tidewater glaciers protects it by moraine, debris dropped off the front over time, whether it's advanced over the top or retreated behind the moraine, that will depend on how quickly it actually begins to erode or retreat. In the case of a glacier, we're looking at it literally world famous for its ability to surge at times. Back in the mid-1800s, beginning about 1850 up to about 1950, that 100-year period, this glacier can't be very, very rapid. It was all of us that about 95% of the glacier 